How are they so perfect? <laughs> the panel you're showing. Hello and welcome to the Handy Women YouTube channel. I'm your host, Geraldine Anello. I am the founder of the Handy Women community, which you can find on the link below. It's on Facebook. It's got over 55,000 awesome, badass women doing their own handiwork. And our mission at Handy Women is to empower women with tools. And to do just that today, we're going to talk peel and stick wallpaper, everybody's favorite subject these days. And to do that, I've got a special guest with me, Adrienne Angle. Hi, Adrienne. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited about this peel and stick project because so many questions in the community. Everybody's doing peel and stick at the moment and everybody's scared by it. And I'm so excited to learn more. So what made you want to do peel and stick? Well, um, I had never done any kind of wallpaper before, and the idea of using paste was a little bit intimidating to me. So I thought that the peel and stick would be a good place to start. Plus, it seemed a little bit um, like pliable, so I thought maybe it would be a little bit more forgiving. Was it? Um, yes. Well, that's a pro and a con about it, actually. So you can stretch it a little bit, um, you know, if something doesn't match up exactly or to get it around a corner. Um, but if you stretch it too much, then it's not going to match up and it's going to warp. So it's kind of like a fine art to find the balance of working with the pliability of it. Interesting. So we see it in the background. It's so beautiful. So how do you pick the design? Do you get samples of it? You just pick one online? How do you determine how much you need? Like, What's that early stage process like? Well, in this case, um, I tend to have very uh, like uh, mid-century modern types of taste. So I knew that I wanted something geometric. Um, I looked online to get some ideas, but ultimately I ended up buying this one at Lowe's. Um, it was one of the ones that they had um, available, you know, to see it. I could get an idea of the texture and the different types of patterns that they had. And I was able to read reviews about it online to see how other people liked it. And it seemed like a good quality product. And you bought all that you needed at once? Did you buy extra in case? <laughs> Um, so I, I measured the wall and then I looked at how many square feet came in the roll um, and picked it out. One thing I did notice is that um, some of the rolls, if you purchase them online, the longest length that they come in is eight feet and I have nine feet walls. So for me, it was really important to make sure that I got a peel and stick wallpaper that was long enough to accommodate my walls and also to be able to hang two strips next to each other so that I wouldn't be wasting and having horizontal lines in the middle of my strips. So that was another reason why I chose this particular brand of wallpaper. Because it was one of the rare few that was nine feet? Um, well, this one I think was maybe actually like 20 feet long. So it would allow me to do two rows without, you know, having any, um, having any waste. So I've noticed that a lot of them will tend to favor like eight or eight and a half feet walls. So if you have taller walls, you may want to be mindful of the length. Um, when looking at the square footage. That's such a good tip. Okay, so you're getting your rolls, you're bringing them home. What happens next? Um, what happens next? Well, there are a few tools that you need um, to purchase with it. Now, thankfully, since I had gone to Lowe's to purchase this, they suggest the tools that you need right next to the wallpaper. And so in this case, it's like a, like a plastic scraper, kind of like a smoothing tool that helps you, um, you know, kind of like mash the wallpaper down so that it will adhere well and, and um, smooth out the bubbles and then um, like a straight edge. So you could use an X-Acto knife or a, like a really good a box cutter even. Um, this is, you know, somewhere in between. It's one of those like breakaway blades. It's very sharp, um, works really? well. Yeah. Sharp? What, why, why the need for the sharpness? Um, so that is how you score it. So when the walls, um, if, especially like if your walls are not even, right? Um, or if you're, you know, cutting in the middle of a row, you put it up and then, you know, there'll be a little bit sticking over the edge. So you'll have to just kind of like cut along the edge and score it. Um, so you can trim, trim the edges. So I find that that's the best way to do it. Um, you put it on the wall, you line it up the best that you can, but you don't, you don't want any spaces. So go a little over if you need to. And then when you get to the bottom, instead of eyeing it up, you know, smooth it all the way down and then, you know, score it along the baseboards and then you get a nice clean cut. That, that sounded hard for, to me for some reason. So, I mean, how, how it comes in a roll, but so like, is it, is it like cut like this? Is it like something that goes from top to bottom like that? Or is it really yeah. big and you have to pre-cut it? Or is it, it's just panels? It's like not too big, it's manageable. So, 
it comes in a long roll. So it, it comes in a roll like regular wallpaper in, in strips that are, uh, I don't know how wide, how wide this is. I was able to do um, most of the way over from the wall to the window here. So I would say like 20 inches wide. Um, so it, it, it's manageable. It comes in, in long rolls and you would work in vertical strips. Now, if you have a, a repeating pattern like this, something geometric, it's not as forgiving um, if you need to match up the patterns. And another thing to take into account when um, like calculating square footage is also pattern repeat waste, right? So if I do a strip and I put it up on the wall and I can, I can take you over here and show you. Field trip. Yeah, it's a field trip. So you can see here um, maybe, but there's, there's the seam line where that I've lined it. So perfect. How Thank you. So perfect. Thank you. So you can see the seam where it's lined up. So if you look at the top here, um, if I score it at the top and start lining it up and then I work all the way down at the bottom. Now you see where I cut it, where it's kind of like right below this oval. I can't just start there at the top, right? I'm going to have to line it up horizontally to match that pattern. And I'm going to have some extra waste. So um, like doing flooring, you know, it's really good to uh, account for like 10 to 15% waste, depending on how big your pattern repeat is, you may even want to go 20%. Now this pattern, you know, repeat is not terribly long. It's, you know, only got two shapes here that are about the size of my hand. So I did about 15% waste just to err on the side of caution. Um, and I ended up having enough. And you're also going to have waste when you- well, I, I don't even understand how they're so windows too. How are they so perfect? <laughs> the panel you're showing with the electric outlet and the window. So do you bring it down and then you cut it neatly around? Like how is it so cut so neatly? So it's also um, just like when you paint, you want to remove the outlet covers um, and then you can score around uh, the outlet cutout and then you put the outlet cover back on. So you're never going to see the part that's trimmed around the outlet. Now the sides are, are pre-cut. It's a nice vertical roll. So the only parts that you really need to worry about scoring are down here around the walls, um, along the edges here. So you can see like my walls are not completely straight. No walls are, I mean, I could put some trim there if I wanted, but I decided to just leave it alone. And then, you know, the ceilings may not be perfect either, but line it up the best, the best that we can. So um, you always, always start from the top and you still have the adhesive behind it. And then you slowly take the adhesive out as you use that tool to, to take the bubbles away. Is that how it works? Yes. So I do find that it's easier to start at the top rather than to start at the bottom. Um, in this case, what I did, because I had to cut around the windows here, what I actually did was I lined up my first piece with the um, pre-cut edge along the edge of the window because I didn't want to have to cut extra pieces around the window. So if you have, um, you know, cut out areas like this on the wall, sometimes it's easier to start lining up your wallpaper next to things like this because it can eliminate waste for you. So if I had started along the wall here, my edge would have been here and I would have had another piece where, you know, I have to go all the way across at the top and have only this little sliver next to the window. So that's, that's more waste. So if you think about starting it that way, you get a little more bang for your buck um, with the wallpaper placement. That's a very good trick. So what happens on the other side, the wall where you said if you had started here towards your right, if you, when you got there, obviously it was a smaller panel, right? You needed to cut it out. Right. When, yeah. do you, when do you cut it out? Before you roll it down or you roll it down and then you cut it? <laughs> well, this is where it gets tricky if you're doing yeah. it by yourself. It's definitely useful. I think to have two people in hindsight, I should have asked for help instead of doing it by myself. Um, <clears throat> so like when you get, um, when you get over here, right? I'm going to, I'm going to get up on this chair. So this goes all the way up. Now, this is one of the areas where I kind of messed up a little bit and it wasn't completely lined up, but you're not going to really see this little seam up here. So I actually cheated a little bit. Um, I went across and I cut it and then I put it a strip here because it was easier to work with. Um, ideally, I wouldn't have had that seam there, but I ended up with it because um, in trying to line up the bottom with the top, 
it ended up not being quite perfect to have that full strip next to it. So that's where sometimes maybe you have to get a little bit creative with the pattern repeats and do a little bit of trimming. But if you'll notice, it worked out perfect here because the edge comes right to the edge of where the window oh. still is. So yeah. I didn't really have to work around this. It's two separate pieces. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, I feel like I keep asking the same question because I just don't get it. Like that spot you're on with that window seal. How, like, what, did you take a cutter? Do you like have the paper go down and then you use a cutter to cut it neatly around? Yes. Yeah, so in, okay. in the case- Now I'm with it. You don't get lucky where things, you know, well, you don't get lucky where things line up like this and you can say, oh, hey, maybe I don't have to work around this window when I can do two different pieces. That's absolutely what you would have to do. Um, you would start lining it up at the top. And what I did on another wall in another room with the same paper, I come down to the window and I, I press it down with that smoothing tool and I score it on the window while being very careful not to rip it here. And as soon as it's free, then I start pressing it down here and then I do the cut. Um, and sometimes, you, you know, it can help to kind of like pre-cut it with scissors just to give yourself a little bit of extra workspace. Uh -huh. um, but for the most part, I work through it while it's attached. One piece the best that I can. And then I cut around the windows and smooth it as I go. So you're not hurting your wall when you're using a cutter? That's not dangerous practice? <laughs> um, no, because I'm never cutting directly into the wall. So I angle it so that it goes in between this space here. There's a tiny little gap yes. in between the shutter and the wall. And so I angle my blade there so that I'm not cutting into anything that would leave any damage. And then when I do the corners, um, I'm very careful. I don't put enough of the blade in you know, I basically just score it and that's all you need. And then you can peel the rest of it away. It's like working with an exacto knife. If you've ever done any kind of like paper crafts or paper cutting, um, it, you only need a little bit of pressure um, if the blade is sharp and it, it cuts right through. And what about the bubbles? I know you mentioned them in the beginning. Is that a real problem? It's kind of easier than you would think. It can be. Most of them can be smoothed out. Every once in a while you get a little one. And here's an example of one that, Whoa. you know, I only had one here and this is because my, um, I was, was a little bit uneven, but the rest of them um, are pretty easy to smooth out. The reason is that this paper is somewhat forgiving. So if you work your way down very slowly and um, if you have ever done any of those like static window clings or put um, like a glass protector on your phone, it's just like that. You wanna work from one edge down and get all the bubbles, you know, in an orderly fashion. But if you happen to miss one, because this paper is fairly pliable, it's like a vinyl material, you can just kind of like smush it down. <laughs> you didn't mention at the beginning the different textures you could get for peel and stick. Is the, is the vinyl one of the textures? Um, most of the ones that I've looked at are some kind of like vinyl type of material. That seems to be what most of the peel and sticks are made from. Um, your traditional wallpaper that you use a paste on is going to be a little more paper-like, um, but the peel and sticks are definitely more like a vinyl sticker, but I think that's a really good feature because um, then when you peel them off, it's not going to damage the wall. They're able to use an adhesive that is easy to remove. It's also probably easier to clean, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's super easy to clean. It has, um, has like a really smooth surface, so I can just get in here with like a damp paper towel and wipe it down if I need to. Um, another benefit of the peel and stick too is that if you make a mistake when you're placing it, you can peel it off and you can replace it. So you're not, you're not stuck with it. Um, and, and I ended up, you know, like peeling and unpeeling and, and cursing and repositioning a few times on this project. So um, I really like that flow with this product and it, this is this is stuck really well um I've been really happy with it so far I've had it up for a few months I haven't had any peeling um and it's it's maintained really well I, I even wonder what's the benefit of regular wallpaper at this point with this technology that works so well that's easier to put up that's easier to replace that's gentle on the wall that's easier to clean why would anyone put regular old wallpaper um I wouldn't. I mean, this is this is a really great option. Like the only thing that I could think of is like if you really want a particular type of texture um, and maybe somebody doesn't like the vinyl or, you know, maybe someone's feeling nostalgic and they really want something that 
you know, looks like it could be in an old home. Um, and I know some people too really like that fabric texture. Um, I don't really have a preference and I like that this is removable if I change my mind. So it's a good option for me. It looks amazing. Congratulations on this beautiful project. If you're watching right now this video, write in the comment, did you put up your own peel and stick paper? Are you now gonna do it because you saw this video? Did you have wallpaper traditionally before and now you're only doing peel and stick? Write it in the comment and also like and subscribe for more. Thank you so much, Adrienne. Thanks, Geraldine. Bye.